got a job here to do for a friend, uh, a gentleman called Stan. Stan's a lad that does all my polo shirts, all the embroidery work. He's got a couple of dogs and he's bought a mincer so he can mince his own dog food. And it's an industrial mincer, obviously very old. And the problem he's got is the threads on the end piece here, this is what holds it all together, are very, very badly worn to the extent where it's actually pushing the end off. So what I need to do, I can't do much with this because it's cast iron. This will just be steel. I'm going to make a new, a new nut, a new lock of nut for the end of it and try and make the threads a better fit on there. I think they just, both, are, both sides are worn, badly worn. So I'll let them measure this thread, find out what pitch it is. It's bound to be English, bound to be Imperial, uh, thread range. I've got a bit of steel and we'll make a new nut, a little custom made nut and try and make it a better fit than that. I'm sure I couldn't make it any worse. So the first thing we need to do is find out what thread this actually is. The thread appears to be about 10 threads of the inch. That's a 10 thread to the inch thread gauge, doesn't fit. It will be 11. 12. You can see there a thread, you can see there the thread gauge of 12 threads of the inch is a good fit. Look around the part of the thread, this part here, that isn't quite as badly worn. Next thing we need to do is measure the diameter. The diameter I need is the diameter of the core diameter of the thread, that's in the root of the thread around here. It's probably an imperial diameter, but I'm going to measure it in metric because the lathe's metric and it's just easier to, to work in metric on a metric lathe. So I'm using the sharp edges of the vernier to go into the root of the thread and I'm getting a size 83.6. Measure further back where it's not as badly worn. 83.6. At the front where it is worn, 83.1. So if we take an average size, we're going to make it 83.5. If I measure the nut, it's 84.6. You can see how much wears on it. What a nice piece of steel set up in the lathe. I've simply faced both sides and started to bore the hole out. I'm going to bore the hole and cut the thread first and then machine the outside later. The thread's the important part. It's pointless machine it to finish size and then cutting the thread because the thread's the most likely place where you're going to make a mistake. So the first size I want, and you know the bore of that hole, I'm going to bore that out to that size. And that is over, but basically an average reading is 64 mil. Sixty three point seven, sixty five, sixty four. We'll make it sixty-four mil. Just taking a four mil cut, two mil aside. You can see it's great and it shifts quite nicely. The chips are coming off blue, that means all the heat's coming off of the chip. Should be the final cut. Basically just a spring cut. Sixty four point one, that's good enough for a mincing machine I would imagine. Next thing I need to measure is the depth of the thread up to a shoulder. This blank's quite a bit thicker. Well, it's a good quarter of an inch thicker, so I can get a little bit more thread. I 
I need the bore size for the thread to go in there, 22 mm I'll just use the DRO to measure that so the tool's touching there zero that, wind it in 22 mm or 21.5 and we've got a little bit to finish off with I'll just put a reference mark in at that Starting to get, starting to get near now. The wider method of measuring. It should be a slash cut. Basically, a spring cut. That's 83.5, that's exactly what I wanted. Now I need to machine a little recess in here for the scroll cutting tool to drop into and also face the inside of that. Right, we've got that finished the bore size to cut the thread. I've got a nice recess in there for the screw cutting tool to drop into and I've machined a little recess in there for the end of the mince that to go into. That's like the force thing that the mince is forced through. It's a nice fit in there. Now we need to set the lathe up to cut the 12 threads of the inch thread. It's a whip wire form thread, 55 degrees. Of course this is a metric lathe which means I've got to use a, a special change wheel and I also won't be able to disengage the lead screw once I start cutting the thread which is going to be a bit of a pain in the arse because I can't turn the I can't physically turn the job to try the thread in there anyway we'll, we'll cross that hurdle when we come to it this is the what I call the messy end of the lathe or the change wheels lathe I've shown this before I've taken the metric change wheels off and I'm going to put the conversion wheels on to cut the imperial thread Right, we need a top gear on here of 50. That's a 50. It didn't clear the original extension piece on the on the lathe main shaft. I actually made that extension piece to get some clearance on it. So that used to catch the gear teeth. Right, so we want a 50 on there. The 50 then drives a 40. Sorry, the 50 drives a 63. That's a 63 tooth gear that I made. That goes onto there. And a 40 on there, and that's our conversion, that's your conversion ratio. That's 63 and that 40. A lot of people use a 127, you can't get a 127 inside the case and it's too big. Right, and then near drive. A 120. I've got a 120 as well. So we need to space that on there first. Then my 120. Like that. Right now is the case of getting them into mesh. These gears need to be set up with a certain amount of backlash in them. Otherwise they bind up and make a horrible noise. I'll put that one into there first. A little bit of backlash. A 
and this one lifts up under there. I knew these old glass panels would come in useful for something. Right, so that goes up under there like that. And that's basically our gear train. Makes those straight good gears, it's not a problem. So we've got a 50, driving a 63, connected to a 40, driving a 120. Right, so that's basically the gear train set up. See the backlash in it? Doesn't matter about the backlash because it's all the drives only go in one direction. A little bit of lubrication before we start. I normally use chain grease, chain spray grease on the gears, but I haven't got any. A little bit of oil. Do the job. This is the quick change gearbox on the on the Harrison lathe. That's a magic lever, the third one. I haven't all got that. I've got a conversion chart which shows me how to set this up to cut the 12 threads of the inch. 12 threads of the inch, it's telling me I need it in the one, two, three, fourth one along. One, two, three, four. Tom log goes into, into there. These two point backwards and this right hand one points forward. And that in theory should cut 12 threads of the inch. We'll check it again. Four, one, two, three, fourth one. Both them um, to the left. And that one to the right. What I'll do, I'll put a very fine cut on and measure it just to make sure I have got the, the 12 threads to the inch. This is the screw cutting tool I'm going to use, 55 degree tool to cut the whip or thread. It's a tool I made to do it, I did a lay back plate for a, a Harrison lathe with it, so I've already got the tool. What I need to do is set the compound side up to the correct angle, 27 and a half degrees. I'm going to cut the thread from the outside going in over because it's a nice big thread. I can see what I'm doing and I've got a nice recess for the screw cutting tool to finish up in.
two little screws to hold the, hold the sand in. Doing there, for doing that one, all the shade stops in the bottom there, runs along there, from there to there, and then that fills up with hot metal, uh, and that metal drops back down to take away any shrinkage. That drives a 63. See your bell end. Great, we'll start again. Any army thanks for bell end. It's also got a cup of a cup. It is a cup, man. You can see the threads are a really good fit. I'm very pleased with them. Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. What's the word? The word's not bellying. Contrary, 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 contrary to belief. Contrary to some people's belief. Bellying. <laughs>